So good morning, everyone, and welcome to ARP's event, A Better Nursing Home Model, Small House Nursing Homes. My name is Stephanie Hunsinger, and I am the State Director for AARP New Jersey. I want to thank you all for coming today. We're excited to see so many individuals here representing such a diverse group of stakeholders. During today's event, you will hear from leading experts about what small house nursing homes are and how they can help change our long-term care system for the better. In June of 2020, a report commissioned by the state and released by Banat titled Recommendations to Strengthen the Wake of COVID-19, Strengthen New Jersey's Resiliency of New Jersey's Nursing Homes in the Wake of COVID-19, highlighted New Jersey's numerous older long-term care facilities, many with three and four bedded rooms. This significant characteristic of our state's system placed residents and staff at particularly high risk of an infectious disease outbreak as we saw with COVID-19. Tragically, more than 9,800 long-term care residents and staff have died during this pandemic. More than two and a half years after the start of the pandemic, there are active outbreaks at more than 300 New Jersey long-term care facilities, and people are still dying. We know we have to do better, and we know we can do better. Since before the pandemic, ARP has been working to reform our long-term care system, and our efforts have only intensified. ARP has successfully advocated for minimum direct care staffing ratios, increased minimum wages for staff, ensuring that the vast majority of nursing home revenues go toward resident care, and much more. But there is still work to be done. We are continuing to fight for increased financial transparency and accountability, to improve the safety and for the quality of care for our residents. To that end, we are honored to be collaborating with fellow stakeholders on the New Jersey Task Force for Long-Term Care Quality and Safety. As part of ARG, ARP's Public Policy Institute series on long-term services and support choices, three reports were released on small house nursing homes, which you will find in the folders that you received when you came today. Today's event will focus on the small house nursing home model's goal of achieving better quality of care and quality of life for residents and higher satisfaction rates among staff and families than experienced in traditional institutional nursing homes. We are gathered here today to focus on the critical role small house nursing homes can play in transforming our long-term care services and support system. The experience of administrators and direct care staff working in these settings, to learn about best practices, and to understand what New Jersey needs to do to advance small house nursing homes as an important strategy to improve the quality and safety of care for our most vulnerable. Our hope is that this is the beginning of a conversation that not only sparks our collective imaginations as a, and a vision towards transformative change, but also provides a clear understanding of what we need to do together to make these kinds of changes a reality for our loved ones. We are honored to welcome all of you to this event. Now it is my privilege to pass the microphone to New Jersey's Commissioner of Health, Judy Persicelli, a leader who has... <laughs> a leader who has and continues to be on the front lines of this pandemic and who is committed to improving the quality and safety um, for all who need long-term care. Commissioner Persitelli oversees our public health services and systems, and prior to leading the Department of Health, she served as the acting CEO of University Hospital in Newark. She, was, she has been alongside Governor Murphy, leading the state's response to COVID-19 along with response to this once in a century health emergency, the Department of Health under her leadership works to protect and improve the health of New Jersey residents. I'm sorry, works to, 
yes, of New Jersey residents. I apologize. Commissioner Persitelli, the floor is yours. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I'm so excited to be here because there are so many of my long-term friends in the audience. Uh, Susan Reinhardt that everyone knows, Dave Knowlton, who I've worked with for a really long period of time. In fact, so long I can't remember when it started. Uh, Andy Aronson and Teresa, uh, you all know. Um, at this point, um, we, we are on uh, calls weekly. Uh, trying to do exactly what we need to do for long-term care. You know, so on behalf of the Department of Health, um, I'd like to extend our thanks to AARP. I am a card-carrying member of AARP. Uh, and all of the volunteers uh, that have worked really side-by-side -side with us uh, to protect the 2.1 million older adults in New Jersey. And thank you for performing the great service uh, that you perform, not only every day, uh, but you were uh, shoulder to shoulder with us uh, during the worst of the pandemic. Notice I said during the worst of the pandemic, because at this point I think the Department of Health, sometimes we feel we're the only ones that realize that we are still in the pandemic. And I think you all know that we are. Um, as an organization representing 38 million Americans over the age of 50, uh, AARP has certainly been a leader concerning issues for our aging population. Uh, they've supported us during the pandemic, as I stated. Uh, the legislative bills designed to protect residents of long-term care facilities and save lives in New Jersey were, were totally supported by AARP. As you know, uh, the consequences of the coronavirus uh, was devastating uh, to our long-term care facilities. Uh, nationwide deaths and deaths particularly in long-term care throughout the pandemic have been significant. In New Jersey, our rate of deaths in the very beginning, uh, when we got hit first and hard, uh, was overwhelming. Uh, there's uh, one silver, line, silver lining as we look at the mortalities in long-term care since that first surge. Uh, New Jersey uh, mortalities per 100,000 is uh, among the best in the nation. It's because of all of you. It's because of the work that you do. It's because of your vigilance. It's because of your relentless pursuit of improving the care that we deliver to individuals and residents, excuse me, <clears throat> in long-term care. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, by 2030, and there's a couple of people in this audience that have to listen to this, all baby boomers will be over the age of 65 by 2030. That's just around the corner. In terms of care, seven out of 10 people will require long-term care in their lifetime. The cost of care will vary based on the care setting, uh, geographic location of care, and the level of care required. This roundtable today represents a new paradigm for long-term care facilities and options for older adults. It's also important as we prepare for this new incoming wave of aging Americans. New Jersey has a, a long-standing commitment to older adults and long-term care. Under the Independence, Dignity, Choice, and Long-Term Care Act, New Jersey has been adjusting its spending over time to create a better balance between nursing homes and community-based services. In addition, the state has developed programs to promote senior wellness and help older adults live independently in the community as long as possible. This month, the Department of Health launched a new public-facing web, uh, web page. You can go to our website and get to the web page to help residents make informed decisions when choosing a nursing home. It's an interactive website. The site empowers uh, the Murphy administration to engage in increased monitoring uh, of nursing homes to maintain key quality of care standards and streamline access to help inform the public when selecting a nursing home. You can click, go to the webpage, you can click on a nursing home and it will bring you to their financials, 
their uh, survey results. Uh, it will give you an indication of a holistic picture of the nursing home you may be considering. It will also help businesses and organizations with state and facility level information that could aid with investments, improvements, and advocacy decisions. So we encourage people, all of you, uh, to review and compare the information. Choosing a nursing home for a loved one is a deeply personal decision. You're actually choosing them a new home. Providing information on the quality of care and other important factors will give individuals and families the ability to make well-informed decisions, especially in very trying times. In partnership with the legislature, the state has increased oversight, monitoring, and survey activities across the continuum of care within the industry. The site also aligns with the Murphy administration's priorities that focus on long-term care reforms, and most importantly, the resiliency of long-term care. We also recognize the importance of planning long-term care needs. So not only health needs, uh, but housing and financial needs that are just as important for aging New Jerseyans. We can prepare to give older adults more long-term care options and more independence to decide what's best for them. And as Stephanie identifies, we can do better. Together with all of you present today, you can make a difference in the future of long-term care for all New Jerseyans. These are important steps in meeting the needs of our growing older adult population and the caregivers. Most importantly, these steps help us as we continue work toward our mission to ensure that all New Jerseyans reach long, healthy lives and meet their highest potential. The department looks forward to continuing our partnership, particularly with AARP uh, and all of the associations the, uh, manager, the owners and managers of long-term care, because I really do think together we can build a stronger, fairer, and healthier New Jersey where all individuals, especially our older adults, meet their highest potential. Thank you. I was saying to someone um, before I, I wanted to say hello to somebody who had come I hadn't seen in a while, but it was like old home week in here and it was just really difficult to break up the conversation. So thank you so much, Commissioner. Um, and it's really wonderful to see so many familiar faces. Um, I'm glad we're able to bring you all together so you can reconnect. Um, I, it is my pleasure to turn the microphone over um, to Ev Liebman, who will be our MC for the day. And although I don't believe she needs very much introduction in this room, I will read her introduction. Um, Ev is the Director of Advocacy for ARP New Jersey, developing and providing strategic leadership for ARP's advocacy efforts and campaigns at both the state and federal levels. Ev works with staff and volunteers to create positive social change and deliver value to ARP New Jersey's 1.2 million members in the areas of health care, financial security, caregiving, livable communities, affordable utility rates, and consumer protections. You, are, you do an awful lot. Ev, please come on up and lead us in the day. Thank you, Steph, and thank you, Commissioner, for being here and for those remarks. Um, I, too, am just thrilled to be here and see uh, so many friends and colleagues, uh, many for the first time in person, um, um, and many uh, who have been deeply involved uh, in our work uh, over the last three crazy years is one way to put it, um, particularly focused on those uh, most frail among us, our nursing home residents. So it is wonderful to be here with all of you and also uh, with a number of our wonderful AARP lead volunteers who have also joined us this morning and um, without whom uh, we wouldn't be able to do any of our work. So um, given that 
all that our nursing home residents, their families, and their loved ones have and continue to experience, the problems we know exist in the system and, and the crying need to fix them. And so we do look forward uh, to this morning's opportunity to learn more about one of the most promising models that can provide a greater quality of life for consumers and workers alike. Um, unfortunately, we do have a couple changes in today's agenda. Uh, Senator Vitale, chairman of our Senior Health, Social Services, and Senior Citizens Committee, um, regrets that he couldn't be here today. He had an unexpected conflict, um, but, uh, but will be watching the video when we send it to him. Um, but I do want to thank his legislative director, Amanda Malillo, uh, for being here today, uh, one of the, the brains behind the office and who we all look so work so closely with. So Amanda, thank you for being here. Um, as you'll hear, we have a wonderful panel, but uh, let me say now, in case I forget, I really want to thank our team for putting uh, this event together this morning, particularly Katie York, our Associate State Director for Advocacy. Thank you so much, Katie. Um, and the rest of our team, uh, Maria, Daniel, Robin, Luis, Rachel, Christine, Julie, uh, Leslie and Susan, um, thank you all for all of the work that you did to put today together.